Hello there, and welcome to another flat earth debunking video. Yes, yet another one. This video is going to be looking at Australia, and in particularly, I'm going to be considering the size of Australia and how far it across it is from east to west, because as many flat earthers and people against flat earth have pointed out, Australia can't be the size that we take it to be if the Earth is flat. Well, first of all, let's get a sense of how big Australia is believed to be. Now, what I'm going to be doing is focusing on the distance between Sydney and Perth, two places right on opposite ends of Australia. So here's Sydney here. I'm going to take the distance right from Sydney Airport, which is about there, and go all the way across to Western Australia and Perth, which is down here, and there is Perth Airport right there. So airport to airport, it's taken to be about 2,040 miles. Uh, now, as I was saying, if you take the Earth to be flat, if you believe it to earth to be, the Earth to be flat, there's no way that you can accept that it's this distance, assuming everything else that we know about the world to be true. Well, the first thing I want to do is consider, you know, how big would Australia have to be, uh, assuming all things, all are things equal. Well, here's Perth's latitude and longitude. It's 31. 32 degrees south, 115.9 degrees east. Sydney, a little bit further south, and 151.2 degrees east. So Sydney is 35.3 degrees east of Perth, according to this information. The distance that Perth is taken to be from the North Pole is about 8,400 miles. And Sydney's a bit further, about 8,500 miles. So I've represented that information on this diagram here. So supposing this the Earth was flat, North Pole here, and Perth and Sydney down here, and the lines from Perth to the North Pole and Sydney to the North Pole are at 50, sorry, 35.3 degrees to each other. And I fixed the scale so that this line is 8.4 on this diagram and this line is 8.5, representing 8,400 miles, 8,500 miles. So we can draw a line from Perth to Sydney and get this program to just tell us how long that would be on this diagram, 5.1. So it would be 5,100 miles roughly from Perth to Sydney if the Earth was flat and the distance from the North Pole to Perth is what we believe it to be. So, how can we settle it? How far is it from Perth to Sydney? Well, it's actually fairly easy to find out because Qantas fly six flights a day from Perth to Sydney that I found. And you can track them, so you can't claim that these flights aren't real. And I've got one up right now that's flying as as I'm speaking to you from Perth to Australia. Sorry, not to, from Perth to Sydney. So you can see here, I'll make this a bit bigger. You've got Perth to Sydney. It's Qantas 568. It's cruising at a speed of 509 knots. It tells you that the direct distance is 2,039 miles. And um, it takes, it's three hours, 43 minutes in the air. Well, 509 knots, what is that? Well, if we look here, I've converted it here on uh, Google. It's 586 miles per hour. So, if it was flying at that speed for 3 hours 43 minutes, how far could it go? Well, it's easy enough to calculate. 
So three hours for a human, that's like 3.7 hours times 586 miles per hour. So about 2,168 miles, that's the farthest it could go. Now bear in mind that the plane won't be flying at that speed the whole time. So this is an absolute upper limit for how far you could expect this flight to fly in that time if it's going at that speed. Now, it tells you here, as I said, that the, the distance is 2,039 miles, so it's about the same as you get on Google Earth. So everything here is completely consistent with the idea that Australia is the size that we believe it to be, which is pretty sensible. I mean, the idea that Australia is 5,000 miles across, more than double what we believe it to be, is just beyond ridiculous. So, Let's consider what options are open to you if you actually want to cling on to your Santa for adults belief that the earth is flat. Well, what, what information could be wrong? Well, let's consider the longitudes, the how far east or west Perth and Sydney are. Well, your longitude isn't just how far east or west you are, it's also related to your time, and particularly what time sol or noon would be at your location. So the idea that either one or both of these longitudes is radically wrong is just not realistic, because it would be noticed very, very quickly. So it's absolutely reasonable to assume that these longitudes are correct. So what about the latitudes? Well, let's go back to our diagram here. If you want the distance from Perth to Sydney to be less than half of what it is here, you thought this Perth and Sydney would have to both be less than half the distance along here. They'd have to be up here somewhere. They'd have to be about maybe 4,000 miles from the North Pole. Well, let's consider that, I know I'm looking at a spherical Earth model here, but um, if the distance from the North Pole to the, uh, to the equator is what we believe it to be, about 6,200 miles, then this will work for a flat Earth or a spherical Earth. So there's the longitude of Perth. So let's go up about to about 4,000 miles from the North Pole. Well, it's right in the middle of China in the Northern Hemisphere. So if you want Australia to keep its size and its longitudes, the longitudes of Perth and Sydney to stay the same, which means that Perth and Sydney get their solar noons at the times we would expect them to get them at, then you'd have to have Australia here in the Northern Hemisphere over China and Japan, which is just, it's just ridiculous. I mean, we know Australia's in the Southern Hemisphere. We know it's, it's summertime in Australia at the moment. There's no way Australia's in the Northern Hemisphere. And there's no way it's on top of China. Uh, so what other options are open to you if you want to believe the Earth is flat? Well, the only other feasible option you've got is that the Earth is half the size we believe it to be, or the distance from the North Pole to the equator is only about 3,000 miles. But that would mean all the distances in the Northern Hemisphere were about half what we believe them to be, which is, again, just completely ridiculous. So, I just don't really see any way out of this for you. We know that flights go from Perth to Sydney in a time that is consistent with the distance between them being about 2,000 miles. If the distance between them is about 2,000 miles, then there's no way that the Earth can be flat without radically altering some other information. But as I've looked at, it doesn't work. So I think this, again, is more overwhelming evidence that the Earth is the sphere that we know it to be.